This is 105.9 The Region, where parents talk and explore practical, proactive, and evidence-based solutions. This is Where Parents Talk with Leanne Castellino. Hello and welcome to Where Parents Talk here on 105.9 The Region. I'm your host, Leanne Castellino. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, it's that time of year when many students are closely considering their options after high school. Will it be university, college, working, a gap year, travel, or something else? The decision can be daunting for teens, youth, and young adults looking to the future in a quickly evolving world. It can also be an exciting next step to think about and plan for. A key question for many parents in this equation, is my child prepared? Our guest today has thought about that very question for himself and other students. He brings a background in student recruitment and co-op at the university level to his current role. Jay Gosling is the founder and president of Discover Year and Mentor You. He's also a leadership coach, speaker, and a father of two. He joins us today from Ottawa. Thank you for taking the time. Hi, Leanne. Thank you. So, Jay, lots to talk to you about, but I'd like to start with what led you to wanting to start up Discover Year. As you mentioned, I was previously working in university recruitment, and uh, between 2011 and 2014, I met about 12,000 students because we kept track. And uh, largely, I was heartbroken by almost all of those interactions. So the typical scenario would be, you know, we'd be set up with a booth representing the university at a, you know, a college and university fair. Students would come over one at a time or in, in droves, sometimes with their parents, sometimes not. And... Um, Almost always, they would present as being very anxious, very overwhelmed, very stressed, uh, unsure, and not only unsure, but terrified about the fact that they were unsure about their futures. Um, and so I started after that started happening for a while, I started to reframe the questions that I would ask them and try to get to know them in different ways. And, and when I would ask them about what they were curious about or interested on the weekends or what they did for fun, very few students could really give me any kind of meaningful answers. Most of them didn't know. They would just kind of regurgitate advanced uh, academic programs that they thought I would think were important and that they obviously knew nothing about at 17 or 18 years old. Many of them would cry. Their parents would um, not know what to do. Um, They would kind of be ushering them along this university pathway in most cases, just because that's the next thing to do. So it was clear to me that young people, it was very different than when I graduated from high school. People were nervous, of course, about going on into the world but more, more than anything, people were excited. And now more than anything, people were very, very anxious. Um, so that I understood that people, young people needed more time in a different kind of environment, different skills to kind of understand themselves better, build motivation and uh, have some curiosity about the world. And then I spent two and a half years working at the co-op office at that university. And I met 500 employers who were uh, hiring our co-op students and, and you know, for, for semesters at a time. And so I turned that into a mini research project. And I asked all of those managers and, and business owners what they wanted from young people that were coming into their organizations in terms of skills and what they were, what the gaps were. And they said all the things that most of us read about in the, in the news on an ongoing basis. They said, we want people who are team players, who understand how to communicate, how to build relationships with others, how to uh, organize their work, prioritize their work, who are resilient, et cetera, et cetera, who are curious. So um, Discovery Year was uh, kind of a mashup of these two things. Number one, giving young people more time and space and a positive environment to better understand who they are, what they want, what they're good at. And then also helping them build these skills that no one was explicitly helping them develop that are really important for their adult lives. So much to unpack there. So let's start with what are some of the skills and specifically that these employers or potential employers were telling you were missing from what was being taught in high school? The biggest one I would say that I've uh, that I've had many conversations with, not only with employers, but with university professors as well, is any kind of a feedback situation between two people or more feedback or a disagreement between students or young people. Um, there was this kind of <laughs> mass exodus from a situation. So young people hadn't really been involved in a lot of situations where they were invited to work through difficulties with each other. So giving and receiving feedback is a huge one. And also just having any kind of disagreement. Uh, young people are are terrified, as I'm sure you know, of, of being canceled, saying the wrong thing, offending other people, and um, so that it's really hard for them to engage in, in particular, in constructive feedback or disagreement. That was a big one. Um, certainly organizing their time 
um, and, and, and being, you know, using professional writing in their emails and in their work, um, being able to prioritize effectively. And, and, and a big one was curiosity, just having an interest and going beyond the nature of the tasks that you're given and just being curious about the work and, and the world. So you intake all this information, you see all of this unfolding at these fairs that you described. How did you then devise a, the program that is Discover Year and what's entailed in it? That's a very good question that uh, I wish I had documented better at the time, but there was uh, <laughs> over a series of probably months, then it evolved. But these the, the five components that I can't tell you how it became clear to me that they were going to be important, but I just knew that they were, uh, were work. So I understood that young people needed opportunities to go and, and build professional skills in the workplace and in different types of workplaces. And then I also knew that they needed very specific kind of coaching and training around some of these skills, uh, largely related to communication and planning and organization and resilience and um, good well-being, uh, mental well-being. And then I knew that travel was such a, I traveled a lot when I was younger and travel was my best education. I had great access to education, but travel, I learned the most through that. So I knew that I wanted them to go out and ex experience the world and to decrease their fear largely around what's what's out there. And then um, I was in the process of doing uh, a master's in counseling psychology and a number of the courses I did there and, and, and a lot of the concepts and research I thought would be very useful. So we integrated a coaching element um, and then I and then I knew that young people um, needed to learn teamwork skills, so we integrated a community service element as well. So that's I don't know why I chose those things specifically today, but I, I just knew that those were the elements that uh, I thought would be most useful to them. You are listening to Where Parents Talk here on 105.9 The Region. I'm Leanne Castellino, and we are talking about preparing students for life beyond high school with our guest, Jay Gosley, founder and president of Discover Year and Mentor You. Now, Jay, you outlined the five key components of the Discover Year program. Could you take us through the structure of Discover Year? How does it work? It's a 12-month program. The programming is a bit complicated to explain, but the, the short answer is that we essentially meet for a full day every Wednesday throughout the year. And that is our intentional skill building and, and knowledge building day. So that's like going to class, as it were, although we, we never go to a physical class. Um, we meet online and we also have 50% of the time we meet in person out in the community uh, at different locations, visiting businesses, campuses, doing experiential learning and helping them integrate you know, what they're learning uh, through discussion. So we meet every Wednesday. The rest of the, the week, they're encouraged to work. Some work full-time, some work more than full-time, technically. Some work part-time, depending on their capacities, their interests, everything else that's going on in their lives. But we meet with them every Wednesday uh, for that full day of workshops. We do a number of things uh, in that day. They meet all kinds of mentors. We work on important skills. The rest of the week, they uh, work and do other things, learn about themselves. And then um, they also have a coach that they meet with twice a month at different times throughout the month, their own individual uh, coach one-on-one. -on -one. And they also have a travel period in the month of February. So some students go for as, as short as a few days and some students go for six weeks, but they all have to go somewhere uh, to travel and learn about themselves and a new culture, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then they're also working on these community service projects that they are uh, assigned with that they, they, they create it essentially and, and implement on their own. It certainly sounds that way. And there's so much exposure to so many different aspects of real life that a lot of these students would probably never otherwise have. Let me ask you, Jay, because at the end of the day, we are talking about taking a gap year in order to participate in something like Discover Year. Uh, take us through some of the misconceptions that may exist out there right now among families with parents and maybe some students as well about taking a gap year. Yeah, it's interesting to include both kind of the students and the parents in this conversation because uh, both groups are prone to, you know, specific people in those groups are prone to these dysfunctional, what we call dysfunctional beliefs or irrational beliefs. So two for the parents, the most common by far are uh, my son or daughter will never go back to school. You know, they'll, they'll take a year off now. They'll just float into the abyss. They'll never build the skills. They won't have the education. They're just going to be living on the street. You know, um, in a matter <laughs> in a matter of years, uh, which is statistically very untrue if you actually do a gap year versus just not do anything. Um, so that myth has been busted time and again. And then the second one that parents often um, 
objection they bring is that my young person will lose all their academic skills if they don't go to school for a year. And what the most common by far um, narrative that you'll hear from people who do a meaningful gap year is that the first couple of weeks back in school is is a bit like, um, you know, jumping in the deep end again. But because they've built a lot of resilience and other skills to fill out uh, that they're kind of their abilities on the year off, they catch up and then they go much farther, much faster, much higher. Uh, after that initial pitch, pinch point. Students, the most common thing that they'll say, and a lot of parents tell us that they say this to the, the, the students, they'll say this to their parents is, I don't want to fall behind. And the, the question that we always ask is behind what exactly, but it's behind the status quo, right? They don't want to appear to be unsuccessful or, or, or not capable and all their peers are going off to prestigious institutions. They don't want to look like they're incapable or, or insufficient. Fast forwarding to today, you know, the impact of the pandemic and all of these sort of uncertainty around the future of work, the future of jobs, the future of just the future in general, quite frankly. So, you know, what kind of impact would you say that Discover Year uh, has had as a result of the pandemic? We had already um, instituted a satellite uh, program because we are based in Ottawa. So prior to the pandemic, we already had two years where there were a few students, mostly in the, in the, the greater Toronto area, who were doing the program in a hybrid model. So we would uh, integrate with them via Zoom, which was useful that we were already using Zoom at the time of the pandemic. Then during the, the pandemic, we were mostly online and we learned that um, that's very effective in a lot of ways. And also for young people who are desperate to build in-person deep connections with each other, it's, it's largely insufficient for that part. It's great for uh, a lot of learning. So now we have a hybrid model where we do about 50% of our, uh, you know, sessions online and 50% in person. And that seems to be a really nice balance. Uh, some like in person more, some like online more. But what we've learned is that um, I think now people are starting to recognize, even though the signs were there from my perspective, that more people needed more time to do these kinds of things before going off to post-secondary or the working world. Now people are really recognizing it because they're seeing this lag and in, in those people, those young people who have been, you know, in their rooms for high school between the end of grade nine and, and, and almost all of grade 12, they missed out on a ton of opportunities in real life. So people are now more cognizant and more willing to say, yeah, let's try this because we, we missed out on a lot. Uh, so that's been really interesting. We're seeing a surge in interest for sure. Much more ahead with Jay Gosling, founder and president of Discover Year. When Where Parents Talk continues after the break. Stay with us. Want to learn more about the show? Email info at whereparentstalk.com. Stick around. Leanne Castellino and Where Parents Talk will be right back on 1059 The Region. Welcome back to Where Parents Talk. Listen live at 1059theregion.com. Here's Leanne Castellino. Welcome back. We are talking about life beyond high school and options for students and families to consider, specifically a structured gap year. Our guest is Jay Gosling, founder and president of Discover Year, which is a certified Canadian post-secondary program. We should also mention that the program fees are RESP eligible and can be claimed as a tuition tax credit. You mentioned parents, uh, obviously a very important part of the equation when we're talking about post-secondary decision-making in many families. What kind of services does Discover Year provide for parents uh, as well as the students? So this is, our, I think, our fourth year of, of running a parent Discover Year program in lockstep with the actual program, um, which started as a pilot project, I think it was four years ago. And what we do uh, with, so that's a, a paid service for parents who want to join as well. Not all parents do. We tend to have about usually about a third of the parents who will join, a third of the families. And uh, what we do there with the parents is in lockstep, we do a lot of the similar skill development exercises, uh, workshops that we do with our students. And it's kind of a dual prong. Number one, it's really interesting learning for those parents as well. So as you mentioned, I'm a leadership coach. So I actually make a living not with Discover Year. Um, it's kind of my passion, but I make a living doing corporate training, leadership development, that kind of thing. So um, we do a lot of the stuff that I do with uh, my professional clients with the parents, but then also the parents are understanding what the, the students are going through. And we do, we uh, share a lot of research and, and dialogue around 
the teenage brain, what's different from today than it used to be, how to, how to communicate more effectively with your teen, uh, with your young person, all that kind of thing. So they're really integrating all these concepts and working with their student to enhance uh, their young person's experience during their, their discovery year. So along those lines, Jay, can you take us through how can parents better support their child with the decision making about what to do post secondary, whether that's college, whether that's university, gap year, working, whatever that may look like for that individual. I would say the biggest thing in my experience is for parents to become cognizant of the judgment that they feel, whether it's from themselves or other parents around the decision and where your young person will go after high school. Um, because whether whether we want to admit it or not, most of us are very mindful of of how other people think and feel about our decisions and our kids' decisions, right? So I think that's a big one. A lot of parents, I think, unknowingly and of course unwantingly, impose um, some negative emotions onto their young people in this process because they have a vision of what success looks like for them immediately, and that doesn't if that doesn't align with the young person, that can cause a lot of tension. So the first thing is just to 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 take stock of the millions of people that are uh, out there in the world. And there's so many great stories of people who did not go on the traditional pathway right after high school, who in fact leapfrogged others who did. Um, so to keep that in mind, because it's a really useful tool to give young people, especially in today's world, time and space to shed a lot of the emotional and psychological barriers that that exist for many young people that didn't exist for a variety of reasons largely, you know, even one generation ago. So just stepping back and understanding that time is okay. There's no rush. This person is 17, 18 years old. We all know that most of us had no idea what we wanted to do at that age. Absolutely. Now, you have such an interesting pulse on today's young people and all the different things that you do. I wonder, you know, what tools do you believe that they need to have, key tools in order to help them navigate today's complex world? Confidence, I believe, is the is the key, is the is the foundation. How you go about building that confidence varies, I think, for different people. But the things that our students say most often, I think, are indicative of what they don't have that they need. So, in other words, they uh, oftentimes, most of them, do know deep down the things that they're naturally drawn towards or motivated by. What is the barrier usually is that they think other people will judge that or they think there's no value or they think they can't make a living doing that. And the, they kind of cast it away and often judge themselves for it. So to have the confidence to, number one, really be truthful about the things that we care about and understand that many people will disagree <laughs> with those things in life and to have the confidence to pursue it in one way or another, uh, regardless of what other people think, I think that's really, really critical. And then the other skill that we focus most of our efforts on is communication. And young people today have just grown up in a time where they communicate so differently um, and through different mediums, and they're just not used. They don't have enough reps, so to speak, in in terms of professional communication, certainly, and uh, building building rapport, listening skills, asking great questions. A lot of journalist uh, type skills, I think you would probably agree, are very useful in the world. So those are those are the the Two of the things, the third thing I would say is this deep understanding that honestly, almost nobody knows what they're going to do for the rest of their lives when they're 17. So they meet, our students meet about 60 to 70 uh, minimum mentors over the course of the year. And almost all of them have had traumatic experiences or been through depression or, you know, broken up with, um, you know, a partner right before they were going to get married or they've been divorced or they had a loved one die who was really close to them. And they share all these things with the students and the students start to see themselves in these people more and more. And they start to really build an understanding that it is actually great that I don't know. And it's important that I explore now rather than pigeonhole myself into something that I think other people want for me. That's such an important point that you make, which is that there's so much more than academics that goes into making these decisions about what you're going to do and where you're going to be after you graduate from high school. There's a confluence of things that can affect that decision making. You talked about speaking to thousands of students, I guess, before the pandemic, when this Discover Year um, organization started. I wonder, these days, as you meet young people, what strikes you about what you're hearing them say to you, what they're sharing with you? 
it's much more difficult to interact these days. So we're just now like high schools and organizations are inviting us back in and other universities and colleges back into schools now. So it's been a couple of years where it's been really difficult. And in fact, the greatest struggle for, for myself and our team members who are presenting to students, interacting with them, asking them questions is, you know, in Zoom meetings, you know, almost nobody has their camera on. Students are terrified to open up in that environment even more so than they used to be. So to me, it's just kind of reinforced that we need to double down on helping them rebuild or learn these skills that they that they didn't have access to be able to learn, you know, human connection and interaction. So I, I would say that it's largely uh, very similar to how it was pre-pandemic. It's just that students had even less access to learning and develop these things, which has made it harder for them. So they're they're lagging behind in a, in a kind of a social and emotional way, I think. I don't know what the statistics are right now, but it's pretty visible, I think. In your time with Discover Year, is there a particular anecdote of a student and a, a parent, perhaps, that really struck you and, and that you still remember because it was so impactful in terms of how Discover Year ended up impacting that individual? It's a great question, but it's very difficult. I, I don't know that there's any one particular person that stands out in my mind uh, right now. But the what I would say is that we have about six of our graduates who currently work for us uh, as ambassadors. So they'll come and share their stories. And, and what I think is most enjoyable, at least for me to observe, is um, when people interact with them, they always say, oh, my oh my goodness, you're 19, you're 20, or you're 18. Like, I, I don't see my my young person and their friends in you at all because of their maturity, of their ability to carry themselves, to connect with people. Their perspective on things is very, they just have so much more uh, wisdom than many of their peers because they've experienced so much more. One thing that I have learned that I that I often like to say is that um, young people today are are generally not as capable of many of the things that we are used to being capable of at the age of 18, but they are most definitely capable of getting there with the right environment and the right uh, support because our students uh, leapfrog in so many ways, uh, other people their age with the support and the kind of intentional skill building that we offer them. So it's really, really cool to see the evolution from the beginning uh, to the end of the year. It's it's very interesting and a very important point that you're making because some of us had the benefit of grade 13. It was just a whole different experience to have that year um, to sort of maybe work on, on things that we didn't know about ourselves, but we were still in a structured environment. When we're talking about Discover Year, we are talking about, as you described, a meaningful gap year. How much of your own lived experience, Jay, would you say went into this organization? Uh, in the moment, I didn't recognize myself much in what we were developing, but retrospectively, you know, I did about a 10 year gap year uh, after I went to university. I, I worked on cruise ships. I worked at the Vancouver Organizing Committee. I traveled around a lot. So um, that's something that I didn't realize at the time, but I benefited hugely from those experiences over an extended period of time. And I also have recently come to understand that I have uh, most definitely have ADHD. And um, it's it's a bit surprising to people who hear that because they've known that for a long time about me, but I didn't recognize it in myself for a variety of reasons. And 50% usually since we've started um, uh, asking the question in our intake forms about uh, students' neurodiversity, 50% pretty much every year of our students identify as having ADHD. So I think that the way we deliver the program is built in, in, in many respects with the way I like to learn and, and experience the world. And so that that aligns well with the students who are a bit, you know, slightly different learners. We also have a, a significant number of students who are on the autism spectrum. So that's, I guess, retrospectively how I would say I see myself in the in, in the program. I don't like to do the traditional thing, um, and so this is non traditional, and that's uh, something that it, that shows up for sure. As we speak, there are going to be families around a dinner table, you know, having this conversation about. So, what are you going to decide to do for next year? And it's not always a fun conversation. It can be a source of great stress in families, uh, especially with the evolving, fast-paced, unpredictable world that we live in. Any advice that you could offer, Jay, having 
sort of gone through it yourself, you know, your work with Mentor You, with Discovery Year, the young people you meet, the access that you have to employers, the workplace. I mean, you have such an interesting lens on this question. Is there any advice that you could share with a student, first of all, and then uh, potentially a parent who's trying to help make this decision? It's totally fine. Totally normal. In fact, totally great that you might not have any idea of what you'll be doing when you're 40 years old or 30 years old. And that's, I hope, useful to hear from one person. But what I know is that it's most definitely useful for our students to hear it from 60 really cool, really successful people. But that is my number one piece of advice is to, uh, to, to that it's okay to slow down. And um, just because everyone on Instagram and Facebook, if they're on there or TikTok, wherever it happens to be, seems to be living in an infinity pool with endless funds and and who are um, beautiful and and very skilled that's not reality and and um, I would invite young people to focus on you know where they are now and take the time they need to to develop the skills they want my advice to parents is is similar is is to um, even though it's hard for many parents I've learned to understand the depth or the degree to which things have changed in one generation it is really significant. Uh, the most significant changes are related to technology and smartphones largely, but things are very different, but it's not obvious if you're looking at the surface, it's not obvious that things are very different, but things are very different. And even biologically and, and uh, um, neurologically, uh, young people today are very different than they were one or two generations ago. So I would invite parents to keep that in mind and, and to really focus on the fact that it's not a race. Is there anything else that you would want parents and students to know about Discover Year? I would say that the most common thing that that everybody comes both to our, our professional environment as well, our workshops with professionals, the thing that we hang our hat on, I mentioned you in Discover Year, and the things uh, that people remark the most consistently is they will say, I have never felt so comfortable to be who I am. It always makes me a bit emotional. Mm -hmm. I've never felt uh, the ability to really express myself this way. I feel so comfortable and so empowered to, to be myself. Um, so that environment, there's there's a, a term that I that I uh, learned in, in research called repotting, and many many. And what that means is that um, uh, sometimes it's useful to pick up our our own person, our plant, our flower, and repot it in another flower bed because sometimes the flower bed we're in is just not giving us the nourishment we need. And another flower bed, uh, while remaining the same plant, the same flower can actually serve us much better. So that is a very useful aspect of Discover Year because most of our students don't know each other from their uh, previous experience. They're meeting a lot of new, very, very different, diverse people. So planting themselves in a very nourishing flower bed, which is the environment that we create and that they contribute to, that's by far the best thing that we offer. What a wonderful image to end on. Jay Gosling, founder and president of Mentor You and Discover Year. We really appreciate your time and your insight today. Thank you very much, Leanne. Thanks so much for listening and hope you'll join us next time. Sign up for Leanne's parenting newsletter and so much more at whereparentstalk.com. This is Where Parents Talk on 105.9 The Region.